It also means being honest. And this is something that's very difficult in a polarized political environment. It really is. Now, I love a lot of President Trump's policies. I do. I think that President Trump has governed way more conservative than I ever thought he was going to, to be completely honest with you. I wish I were as wrong about President Trump on that and everything else as I was about President Trump on that. Right? I did not think President Trump was going to govern conservatively. That was wrong. Obviously, he's governed very conservatively. But the president has made our argument more difficult when his face opens. And we all know this, and we're among friends, so we're allowed to say it. I've said this among not friends, right? The fact is that it makes our job more difficult when the president says stuff that is difficult. When the president says stuff that it can be interpreted as racially tinged, when the president says stuff that is pretty obviously morally vile, right? When the president, look, the president of the United States may be a lot of things, but he's not great with women. Okay, like, the, these are just facts. Okay, like, if I had a 17-year-old daughter, I, w I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want the president in the room. Alone. Like, I, I would not let the president babysit my children. Like the, the, again, the president is great at a lot of things. He surrounded himself with a lot of great people. But I just, he, he is like my two-and-a-half-year-old son. He runs around and bangs his head on things. And I love him to death. But at 7.30, he needs to go to sleep. Now, the reason that I say this is not because, you know, it's, it's hard to make jokes about the president. Obviously, it's not. The, the, the reason that I say this is because when you're talking to folks who are moderate or on the left, if you look like a lackey for the president of the United States or anyone who is not God, basically, you get yourself into trouble. And when it looks like you're willing to subsume your own values out of political loyalty to anyone, it's a problem, too. You can do two things can be true at once. You can like what he's doing as president. You can have voted for him in 2016. You can plan to vote for him in 2020. And also, when he says bad, thi when he says bad things, they are bad things. Yeah. And, you, and that's what's going to... And that's what's going to earn all of us credibility with all of the folks in the middle and on the left. Because people sense dishonesty. Right? People sense dishonesty. And it seems dishonest... To, look, when people say President Trump is like King David, okay, you know who... First of all, King David wrote the Psalms. <laughs> Donald Trump did not even write the art of the deal. But, it's the, but beyond that, when we say the president, when, when people say, when pastors say, President Trump is like King David, everyone looks at that and laughs because it's a silly thing to say. Okay, the fact is that God gets to decide whether President Trump is like King David. It is our job to be Nathan. When, when King David decided that it was a good idea to strip another dude's wife and then send him off to battle to get killed on the front lines, Nathan the prophet came in and read him the riot act and threatened to take the king king kingship from him. Right? That is our job. Our job is to hold people accountable. And that, again, that doesn't mean go vote for a Democrat. God forbid. But it does mean. <laughs> but it does mean that honesty is the best policy when it comes to this stuff. And this is particularly true among young people. Okay? I spend most of my time talking to young people. Seven, I have about a million listeners a day, well, a million downloads a day on our podcast, which when you measure it out is a, is a talk radio audience that is actually larger than the biggest talk radio shows in the country. 70% of the people who listen to my show are under the age of 35. And what those folks appreciate is a little logical consistency. And people, believe it or not, can handle shades of gray. People are capable of this. We don't have to defend every bad thing in order to defend the good stuff. In fact, what we should be saying early and often is when the president commits a sin, yes, it's a sin, and when, he commits some, and when he does something great, yes, he deserves the credit. Because if we don't do that, we're not being honest. And we're not being, frankly, I think, sufficiently religious. Because I think that God can choose any number of tools at his disposal. I don't think that we ha God does not require us to abandon our own ideology, philosophy, and morals at the door in order to back any sort of statement or policy that is bad. God expects of us to do the right thing. And then God uses who he wants as a tool.